Welcome back everyone, this is the State of the Nation. And now the savior of Sri Lankan liberal economists and think tanks. I believe uh, there are only two think tanks that don't do any thinking, but more like copying and pasting from what their Western lords are saying. Now that Western lord seems to be in trouble. Not a bit of trouble, but a lot of trouble, deep water stuff. I'm talking about the US economy. Now, in a recent interview on CNBC, billionaire Warren Buffett said that uh, there had been little progress over the past few months in the economic war being fought by the United States all around the world. Now, he admitted to the U.S. economy being in shambles. Right now, there's a debt crisis, a possibility of the U.S. defaulting, and the southern border is chaotic. Basically, any Tom, Dick, and Harry can walk right into the United States. Uh, which is also good news for most of the people who wants to leave this country. Go to Mexico, walk right in, you can get through. The president, President Joe Biden of the United States, is a walking zombie, has no clue whether he's dead or alive. And on top of it, most of their younger working population has go gone woke, resulting the country being broke. Inflation is at all time high, though not in Sri Lanka alone, but in the United States as well. A recent article published in the Harvard Business Review asked a straightforward question whether America is in decline. Now the review points out that America's list of complaints seems endless. Real wages are falling, productivity growth is down, companies aren't competitive in the global markets, white collar jobs are no longer secure. America's infrastructure is collapsing, the federal uh, deficit is soaring, the health system is deteriorating, the cities are unsafe, the schools are failing, the gap between rich and poor is widening, yada, yada, yada. There's a lot of other problems. Now, whatever said and done, the US's, uh, the US economy's failure is not a good sign to the rest of the world, as the US currency is the dominant trade currency worldwide. This is why most other uh, rising nations have moved towards a different type of currency with the BRICS nations proposing an alternative. Let's bring in uh, Danidu Vitanamasam to get some data on the matter. He joins me now uh, from the data board. Danidu, uh, good to see you once again. Uh, the data don't lie, Danidu, and it looks like uh, it's bad news for America. Actually, correction. It's really bad news for America's local slaves, aka the think tanks. Exactly, Mice. Now, I'm going to look at three different things that you mentioned. Firstly, with regards to the debt ceiling that you uh, just was referencing. Now, the debate is going around between the Treasury and the, and, and the House of Representatives about how the debt ceiling can be increased. The Republicans don't want it increased unless there are huge budget cuts. Uh, a similar situation to what's happening in our country. And the Democrats, led by Joe Biden, wants no negotiation but to increase the debt ceiling. Now, something I want to point out is from 1960, 78 times, which is not, not a, a usual amount, the debt ceiling had been increased. If they don't do this, basically to crunch down the numbers for you, right now it stands at 31.4 trillion US dollars. If they don't increase it, by June, the United States would default. And they say even if it's a soft default, if you say, then it, <laughs> there will at least be about, uh, about 500,000 jobs that are lost, even within that small period of time that these are what the analysts are saying. So something that people need to be very careful of uh, in the United States and specifically in this part of the world. The other thing I want to look at is, Mahesh, the banking crisis. Now, you referenced this. Three things that we are going to look at here is, now, you spoke of the inflation rate. The US took it very seriously, so seriously, in fact, that they have been increasing interest rates so much. And I'll show you how there has been a sort of artificial dip in the inflation because of those in, uh, interest rate, uh, interest rate uh, hikes. That is one thing. Number of banks, as you have well known, and one thing I will be pointing out is the first Republican bank, which the first Republic bank, which on May first was taken over by the Feds, and was uh, the assets were sold to J.P. Morgan and Chase, which is the biggest bank in Sri Lanka, uh, biggest bank in the United States. Now. Multiple banks are failing within the United States because there are bank runs. Now we see that the banking system is the center, not only in the United States, but in any economic system. If there is a huge bank run, which is where people start pulling out their funds, the, it's actually very difficult for us to understand how bad it is, is going to become. Now Mahesh, the last thing I want to show you is this dip. What I'm trying to show as the uh, sort of the artificial dip in the inflation uh, in the inflation within that country. Now this is from the uh, Bureau of Labor, Labor and Statistics, the most latest result. You would have seen this while you were while you were discussing what Warren Buffett was also saying. Is because of the high pressure that the Feds are putting by increasing interest rates and not allowing people to borrow. We see that the business community in the U.S. is getting a massive hit. Indeed, uh, Dennis, I was thinking now since America is uh, in such 
economic trouble, why don't we send those uh, brilliant economic minds we had who suggested that, you know, uh, we should default and go and take another loan. I think they can go and fix the uh, American economy. What do you think? As usual, Mahesh, I think they're extremely silent these days and they're going to be continuously <laughs> silent until maybe America gets on its yeah, feet. Yeah, I'm waiting for the next version of things, like how they changed the story. They said IMF is the way. I'm waiting for the next version, from, especially from these think tanks. Uh, when when st things started going down the drain for our people, 22 million of our people, when that is happening, let's see what these think, uh, think tanks are going to say. Exactly. <laughs> All right, that is it, Anwar at the data board. Thank you. Now, another indicator of America's failing economy is its banking system uh, showing cracks, just like what Danidu mentioned. Re uh, recently, a report on the Social Science Research Network found that 186 banks in the United States are at risk of failure or collapse due to the rising interest rates and a high proportion of uninsured deposits, just like what um, Danidu kept mentioning earlier. Now, the report titled uh, Monetary Tightening and U.S. Bank for in 2023 estimated that the market value loss of individual bank assets during the Federal Reserve's rate increase was high. The study also examined the proportion of banks uh, funding from uninsured depositors with accounts worth over $250,000. In case of another bank failure, does this mean it's bad news for this part of the world? Well, John Minow is Professor of Economics at Sarah Lawrence uh, College in New York, USA. Professor Jami Maldud, who joins me via Zoom. Professor, I appreciate you being here. Thank you very much. Now, there is a lot behind the scenes uh, regarding the U.S. banking system. Several banks have already collapsed, Professor, despite uh, not being major banks, which shows very concerning stress on the U.S. banking system. Now, what is your assessment of it? Thank you for that question, Mahesh. So the short answer is that the U.S. banking system is showing increased fragility. And uh, the consequence is because of um, a, a set of legislations passed in 2018, which allowed um, smaller sized banks to actually take on more or mid sized banks to take on more risks. And so this has meant that um, we had a situation where something that the Dodd-Frank Act was supposed to stop, uh, that act came into being in the wake of 2007, 2008, the financial crisis. Now, because of lobbying by the industry and also um, the, the sort of policy framework of the previous administration, um, a lot of those restrictions on what mid-sized banks could do uh, had been removed. And this has meant, um, you know, we are ent entering into a difficult time. It's unclear what, uh, where we are headed to in terms of the fragility of the banking system and that regulatory framework that was changed in 2018. Indeed, uh, Professor, we also see that the debt ceiling crisis is pushing America towards becoming a default nation, which I doubt will happen. I think they might reach an agreement at the last moment. Uh, but what does this say about the health of the American e economy, more so about the U.S. dollar, now that many countries are turning away from it? For a nation that is depending on the U.S. dollar, like Sri Lanka, should this crisis in America be of any concern? Yeah, so that's a multi-layered question, Mahesh. Um, the first issue is that, in fact, um, the so-called debt crisis is, um, is, is, an, is, an, is an extraordinary example of the power of ideas, not of any reality, in the sense that no country can ever run out of its own sovereign currency. And the US debt, federal debt, is denominated in its own currency. There's a particular institutional framework that creates the illusion that the U.S. is going to run out of money. But the U.S., but a, but a government in terms of its own currency is not the same as a public. Government debt is not the same thing as private debt. Right? And especially the U.S. dollar, which is the global currency. I'll come to your other question in just a second. Um, but it's a, it's a manufactured crisis. The, the strength of the U.S. economy is actually reasonably okay. I mean, our unemployment is very low. Um, inflation has fallen. It is still high. It has fallen. 
um, there is there are a number of positive things that one could point to, um, except for this one, which is, as I said, it's manufactured. Now, in terms of the implications for Sri Lanka, first of all, I think there is the, the power of ideas is important because it creates the impression that countries like Sri Lanka should pursue austerity programs, which they already are, but this tends to reinforce that notion, which has which is going to have devastating, and it's already had devastating implications for your country, right? Uh, pushing more and more people into uh, poverty and increasing unemployment, which is needless. Um, this, the second issue is that the higher interest rates that we are seeing here would mean a devaluation of the Sri Lankan currency which means that um, import costs are going to rise in your country, which in turn would mean that such an import dependent country is going to face higher costs, including higher food costs. So all in all, the consequences would be extremely difficult. Um, whether or not Sri Lanka can actually be part of a multipolar currency deal with other countries, it's not clear to me, but certainly this, time of multiple currencies or multiple joint relationships between countries in terms of currency transactions, you know, Nostra, Vostra accounts and so on, certainly does descend to the dollar. And so in that sense, yeah, we are kind of entering into uncharted waters, not unlike the early 1970s when, um, you know, you had another period of enormous global monetary disorder in the wake of the collapse of Bretton Woods. Absolutely. Uh, Professor, what is your assessment of the U.S. economy in the next couple of years, especially with a presidential election next year? So there are two issues there. And the first issue has to do um, with democracy. Uh, and I think that I happen to be one of these economists who take seriously that you cannot really talk about economics without talking about politics. Um, that being said, I do think and a lot of scholars have written about this, and maybe your readers are, are familiar with some of this uh, literature or not, but there are serious fears about uh, US democratic institutions if a Trump administration comes into, uh, is elected. There are very serious concerns about that uh, for reasons that should be pretty obvious. In terms of economic policy, um, there are multiple issues. If that administration is elected, and there's always that danger, we could see growing uh, and the acceleration of inequality in this country, which has already been a major source of enormous turmoil in the United States. Um, and so that's uh, that. Uh, in terms of economic policy, um, I don't pay much, uh, I don't think there's much intellectual support for the kinds of policies that the Trump administration had pursued in the when it was in office. I think that um, I have concerns about the Biden administration, but I think in many ways uh, it is pushing towards a policy framework, the Inflation Reduction Act, industrial policy. These kinds of initiatives are very important. And I'm hoping that in regards especially to the question of um, alternative technologies. I think that's a crucial one. I think that has a greater chance of being developed in the United States uh, and being the United States being part of global measures to reduce greenhouse gases um, compared to, let's say, if, if a Republican administration is elected, when, in which case those things are going to be off the table, which has grave consequences for uh, not just the environment, but also just very narrowly economic issues. And people often tend to unnecessarily um, separate out the two, but um, climate change, floods and droughts will invariably have an impact on even very narrowly economic questions, nar narrowly economic issues and markets. So I think a democratic administration being elected would provide better chances for uh, renewables and shifting the direction of um, the economy in that direction and away from fossil fuels, which could have all kinds of positive knock-on effects on other countries and the global economy. 
True indeed. Um, all right, we have to leave it at that. Thank you very much. That was Professor of Economics at Sarah Lawrence College, New York, Professor Jami Maudud. A short break now. More State of the Nation next.